Aí, Mário, tá tudo perto, já aí. Poor Andorra. Few have heard of it, and those that have tend to give it a bad press. Online, it's been unfairly accused of being boring, of being disappointing, and being rather ugly. Sentiments possibly shared even by some Andorans. Instead of placing this public bench looking over the valley and the capital Andorra La Velia below, the local responsible for putting it in place clearly thought that looking up at a pile of rocks would be far more preferable. Being high up in the Pyrenees, it doesn't help that Andorra is so difficult to get to without a car. With only 5% of its 460 odd square kilometres being flat enough to do anything with, Andorra has had to resort to placing its only train station over the border in France, with no track actually crossing any part of Andorra, and its only airport in neighbouring Spain, or rather Catalonia, where in 2018 Andorra was still waiting for Spanish officials to grant permission to allow even Ryanair to fly into. If one does manage to get here, a decent bus network links all of Andorra's towns to the capital La Velia, but fares are surprisingly high and the buses don't quite go as far as one would like. The Rockdale Care viewpoint, reached only by car or on foot if one has the stamina, is not for the faint-hearted. There is little between the walkway and the almost 2,000 metre drop down to the town of Canillo below, apart from breathtaking views across the valleys of Montaup and Valire de Orient. If that doesn't get the adrenaline pumping, parts of the walkway that's made of glass may do the trick, and Miguel Ansil Gonzalez's rather chilled bronze statue called the Ponderer certainly will. But if all that is just too much, the views can still be enjoyed while standing on more solid ground, and where the artwork nearer the car park is more likely to leave one feeling disappointed than dizzy. Evident from the deflated reactions of passing participants, this huge pair of binoculars taking part in Andorra's Land Art Exhibition of 2017 was sadly not a huge pair of binoculars. Another work taking part in the exhibition was this huge 400 metre high piece overlooking La Velia, by local Catalan artist Marc Solares. Few Andorans seemed to know what it was nor whom it represented, although one tried to convince me it was Simon and Garfunkel. The piece is called Somme, Catalan for We Are. It's of a young person fleeing home with a younger sibling, highlighting the fact that a change of circumstance can suddenly make any of us anywhere in the world a potential refugee. The piece was poignantly placed close to the route that the Spanish used to flee the Franco Civil War in the 1930s, seeking refuge in Andorra and neighbouring France. Works by other local and well-known Catalan artists can be enjoyed elsewhere in La Velia, like Jaume Plenza's Seven Poets and Salvador Dali's Nobility of Time. Neither artist is or was Andorran, but Andorra's justification for exhibiting Catalonia's cultural output so prolifically over its own is that Andorra is a Catalan country. Although Spanish, French and Portuguese are spoken widely here, Catalan is the only official language of Andorra. Yet Andorra doesn't just exhibit Catalan culture. It has some fascinating and rather quirky exhibitions, like the Museum of Miniatures in Ordino. For somewhere that is aptly small, it exhibits a huge collection of authentic Russian dolls, or rather guys and dolls going by some of the beards. A vast collection of religious art and crucifixes from Russia and Ukraine, and these delightful Japanese perfume bottles, beautifully decorated with Andorran figureheads and landscapes. What's so miniature about all those, I hear you cry? Well, who knows? 
The actual miniatures professed by the museum are found at the back of the room, where an array of microscopes invites visitors to see evidence that not just one, but three camels can actually walk through and even along the eye of a needle. Ukrainian artist Nikolai Siadristi somehow created these tiny yet intricate and perfectly scaled sculptures on needles, pinheads, apple pips, grains of rice and what looks like a chipped false nail. Is there anything though that can be described as being purely Andorran? Some might say it's duty-free shopping and in particular its trade in tobacco. Even though Andorra follows most of Europe with age limits and smoking bans in public places, it still allows the use of public advertising and sells tobacco so cheaply, openly and in such large volumes with free gifts and even toys to entice people to buy some. Others would argue that its architecture is what's distinctly Andorran, particularly its vast and well-preserved collection of beautiful Romanesque churches. With their distinct stone walls and tall bell towers, some date back as far as the 12th century. An 80-metre spire, though, makes up the tallest building in Andorra, although this is not a church. The Caldea Spa building, just on the outskirts of La Velia, was built in the 1990s and designed by French architect Jean-Michel Roule. It was designed to echo the shape of minerals and crystals and the transparency of water, all vital elements used by the larger spa centre in southern Europe. I would argue, though, that Andorra is its stunning and unsport countryside. In the winter, thousands of visitors enjoy its many ski slopes, and in the summer, hikers enjoy its wide range of trails across its tranquil valleys and mountains. Andorra is one of only two countries in Europe where its tri-points are all with the same two countries. France and Spain verge with Andorra both to the east and west of the country, yet only the eastern tri-point has a well-marked-out route to it and is apparently the easier of the two to find. However, after three hours climbing Mont Malus from Grau Reutsch, and still only a quarter of the route done, I decided to retire to Lake Mont Malus instead, and resign myself to standing in just two countries at the same time, instead of three. Oh well. <laughs>